Good morning. Good morning. Guess I better turn this on. That's better. Good morning. Beautiful day, eh? I don't know who's responsible for this, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your attendance here this morning on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And it's also a Sunday, a special one here at St. John. We're celebrating First Communion with three of the young people in our congregation, Callie Barr, Dylan Markworth, and Ty Teske. And it'll be done a little bit differently. I see my clock already blew off a while. Been doing it a little bit differently because of Pastor Dan's uh, phobia and not wanting to get too close to people. Speaking of which, so one way, the sure way to get dirty looks is walk into the Napa store in downtown Merrill on a busy Friday afternoon wearing a mask. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So anyway, welcome to you all. I genuinely appreciate your presence here this morning. A lot of prayer requests. Uh, George Corrigan, Pat Regala's brother, who's not doing well. He's in hospice care. Pray for him. Carla Schuett, who's undergoing cancer treatments and recovering from surgery. Keep her in our prayers. Also, the victims, you know, natural disasters happening. The wildfires in, North Car in Northern California still going on. And pray for the victims of those fires and the victims of Hurricane Laura, especially the residents of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Got a prayer request for a Abraham Sari Saris, Abraham Saris, who is Naveen Saris's father. Naveen is the pastor downtown at Emmanuel, and he is also in hospice care. Uh, for Marlene Stubbe's brother-in-law, David Scheffler, who is also in hospice care. And for Jeannie Klinger's sister, Sally, who died yesterday. And Sally was just a few months short of her 100th birthday. So we'll keep all of those folks in our prayers and begin our worship service in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song, which I will see, sing one verse of, if I can find my voice this morning, is Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. <clears throat> Let us ever walk with Jesus. Follow his example pure Through a world that would deceive us And to sin our spirits lure Onward in his footsteps treading Travelers hear our home above Full of faith and hope and love Let us do our Savior's bidding Faithful Lord with me abide, I shall follow where you guide. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue our worship with the reading of God's Word. Any electors? Do I hear a lector? Do I see a lector? Apparently not. I'll do that job. Is it you? Well, see, I've got it right here. Romans 12. 
I'll shoot by you. All right. All right. I'll do it. Be careful. I am. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. She'll, yeah, she'll be okay. Fine. She'll talk loud. All right. Starting with a second reading? Yes, right yeah, there. All right. Second reading is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate that. And if you're looking for a more in-depth look on any of these alternate readings, such as this one, that's typically what I do for my Wednesday Bible study. So you can check those out on Facebook, website, and our YouTube page. So the Holy Gospel this morning, I'm going to ask you to please stand as you're able for the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great sufferings at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to, if any, want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Bugs. I'm having a heck of a time with wildlife out in this neck of the woods. I related the other other time. A couple of weeks ago, I was driving along and felt something crawling up my leg. And as I'm driving along and looked down, it was a mouse. And yesterday I was coming up 44th after going to the grocery store. And a bee came in the car, went down my back shirt, stung me. So I'm driving down the road with a bee stinging me in my back. And I must not be a friend of animals, I don't think, but anyway. 
So Jesus says to his disciples and says to us, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Take up your cross. So what is your cross? I submit to you that your cross is whatever binds you, whatever entraps you, whatever kidnaps you, whatever holds you back. That's your cross. And it's different strokes for different folks. However, I also contend that very often at the heart of whatever cross it is that you are bearing is the fact that you have not yet come truly to the realization that you are genuinely and unconditionally loved. Not all the time, not in every way, but deep down, sometimes deep down, you are like a little child roaming the empty corridors of your soul, crying for your mommy. So that's the source, I think, of most of our crosses. And what are the symptoms of those crosses? Very often, I think, fear is how that lack of love is manifested in our life. I think fear is the biggest system, or symptom, rather. Fear is the biggest symptom. And how does fear manifest itself? Again, a lot of different ways. Anger and hatred, two sides of the same coin. See a lot of that going on today, and I think fear is a genesis of most of that. There are other manifestations, anxiety, worry, pretending that nothing bad is happening. Those are all ways that fear is manifested, I believe. And how do we handle that? Well, again, as individuals, we handle it in a lot of different ways. But what I have witnessed, what I've experienced, in my uh, almost 70 years, gosh, I'm getting old, um, is a couple of things that I was thinking about, a couple of ways in which we deal with fear in our lives. And number one is too much. We say to ourselves, if I fill my life with too much, then I won't have to stop and face who I really am and to face what's really going on around me. So we do too much. We stay busy all the time. Like my father, Ken Sire, had a full-time job working for the Bureau of Land Management in Billings. And he was in upper management. It was a busy job. And then he, we had this 640-acre wheat farm that he also took care of. And he'd go out after work every night and every weekend. In the summer, we'd all move out there. And he stayed busy with that farm all the time. He was always moving. And then he retired and he kept doing the farm thing and a bunch of other stuff. And then at age 78, he leased the farm, he stopped, and he died. We do too much. We say too much. All you have to do is take a look at our addiction to social media and all its iterations. Now... All those things can be useful tools for staying in touch or recording an excellent worship service and posting it. There's nothing wrong with that, but uh, too often we devolve into saying too much. And please, please don't ever send me one of those things where you have to reply or you're a schmuck. If you don't reply to this and send it to 50,000 other people, then you are a complete a-hole because I am right and everybody else is wrong. So don't do that. We say too much. We do too much and we say too much and we want too much. If I get just a little bit more, everything will be better. I'll be happy if I can just fill the empty places in my life with more stuff. So, too much. Too much is one way that we deal with fear in our lives. And on the contrary, another way is by doing too little. 
Maybe you ventured out once or twice in your life and it did not go so well at all. So you have decided to permanently retreat. You do too little. You become an innocent bystander in your life. You say too little. You don't speak up for yourselves. You claim that what you have to say doesn't matter. And you want too little. I'm not good enough to have any more. I don't deserve any more than I already have. Now, most likely in these descriptions, you may have found a version of, of yourself. I know that I have at least an occasional version of yourself. So what do you do now? After Pastor Dan has roundly scolded you, what do you do? Well, you do what Jesus says. You take up your cross. You take up that fear, that anger, that hate, that anxiety, that doing too much, that doing too little. You take that up. And you follow Jesus. Where are we going, Jesus? We're going to Golgotha. What happens at Golgotha? All that garbage, all that stuff is put to death. Last week, we talked about Jesus as the Messiah. That was Peter's claim of who Jesus was, right? And what did we say the primary job of Messiah was? To set you free. And that's why he says, take up your cross. Follow me, put to death all that stuff that binds you, all that stuff that has kidnapped you, all that stuff that holds you back. And turn instead to the promises of God in Jesus Christ who says he is the truth, the truth that will set you free. I'm a pragmatist, a reluctant pragmatist, I keep wait, wait, waiting for the, uh, the Facebook numbers and the YouTube numbers to go up. I'm, I, I spend too much time, as I've told you before, too much time on YouTube watching aviation videos and other stuff. And I see, you know, these people with 55,000 followers and 80,000 views. And I think we're up to 17 followers now on our <laughs> YouTube site. So... So I understand that I've been up here for almost 13 years preaching the love of Jesus. And I'm guessing, as I have observed it and experienced, not much has really changed. People, including myself, really over the course of all that haranguing about unconditional love really haven't changed. Our love-starved state of fear still compels us to do too much, to say too much, to want too much, or on the contrary, to do too little, to say too little, and want too little. But maybe, just maybe, using one of Jesus' favorite analogies about planting seeds, maybe if I continue to harangue you enough, Maybe this message of unconditional love will plant a seed, plant a seed in that empty corridor of your soul, a seed of peace and hope and love that will blossom, blossom into the reality of true freedom for you. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Any questions? Amen. I think I got it all. Did I miss a page? Yeah, I think I got it all. Is that enough? Yes, I hear a resounding. Yes, that was enough. Okay, I'll put it away. But we'll continue our worship by declaring our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You won't find it printed anywhere, but I know it's printed on your hearts and in your minds. So we declare that I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now confident that God hears us, how that, how that turns out for us all, I'm not quite sure. As we've talked about before regarding prayer, we probably, when things get back to a little more sense of normalcy, we'll probably have a Bible study on, on prayer and what it is all about. But even in your most skeptical state and even in your biggest doubts, prayer, if anything else, is a time for you to get out of your own head, get out of your own heart, think about somebody else, remember those in need, and also remember yourself if you, in fact, are in need. So with that spirit and confident that the Lord hears our prayers, we pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need. We pray, God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on useful things. Grant us to trust in you that we may lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Bless your church around the world and bless your church here in this place as we name this morning Aaliyah A. Strike, Susan Knight, Brandon Webb, Todd Miller, Bryce Heil, Shane Belke, Kay Behrens, Steve Zahn, Melissa Haroldson, and Bruce Coors. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation where fires, floods, and storms have ravished the land. And heal and help those people who live on that land to recover and keep faith. God of all nations, you call us to strive to live in peace with one another. Give us ears to hear one another and fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate, advocate and genuinely care for all citizens. God of hope, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. This morning we pray for George, Carla, David, Abraham, the victims of wildfires in California and Hurricane Laura in Louisiana, the family of Sally, and all those we now bring to you in the silence of our hearts and minds. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, to be patient in suffering, and to persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Be with us, Lord, in your faith, hope, and love. God of grace, you give us everlasting life, in love, we recall our loved ones who now live in your undying light. We honor them in our faithful remembering. And Lord, in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We'll continue our worship with the offering if you have a financial contribution to make to St. John, you can place it in one of the baskets on the table at the entrance to our beautiful sanctuary. Again, I think I have a better view than you guys, but uh, we moved back in this direction for the sake of the placement of this table in First Communion. So next week, 
weather permitting, we may be back on the mound. So people thought it was appropriate that Pastor Dan should be preaching from a pile of sewage for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to make of that. But. Anyway, I do appreciate your contributions, and not only financially, but people do a lot of things around here still to keep uh, the church going, and we are entering that season when Sunday school is going to be starting up and confirmation, and we're going to have both of those things, taking some precautions in both areas and with some extra help, so all that stuff is, is in the works, and that takes a lot of work, so I, again, appreciate all that. So thank you again as we pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. And we give thanks for the bounty of this world. Help us to share this abundance so that our giving might proclaim your steadfast love in this community and in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now before we begin Holy Communion, we will sing the hymn of the day. Let us break bread together. You have a copy of it. And we'll sing all three verses of Let Us Break Bread Together. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, as we share this meal together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin.
do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. First communicants to come forward individually with any family and friends who wish to join them. And I'll explain the process as we go through it. But uh, rather than me serving the first, communi first communicant, they will have members of their family serve them the bread and the wine. And then they will in turn serve their family and friends who have gathered with them the bread and the wine. So we have a wine glass for each of them. We have a plate with bread for each of them. And then we have a tray of the small communion cups, one for each family. And as I reminded the young people, I give them a choice. Do you want wine or grape juice? They all enthusiastically said, wine, give me wine. <laughs> but I also told them that I have to fill up the wine glasses enough to make it look like there's wine in it. But you don't have to drink the whole thing. You, just, you can just take a sip. So with that, we'll do this alphabetically. Again, three young people. So Callie Barr, your family and friends, I invite you to come forward, please. You come on up to this front table. And Callie, whoever is going to serve you the wine, they can. you can give them the wine goblet. I think yours is on the end. It's got your name on it. Whoever's going to serve you the wine, you give them that wine glass. And then whoever's going to serve you the bread can take the plate of bread. Whoever's going to do that. Okay, why don't you, let's see. I guess that's, that'll work, that'll work. So I'll say the words and then uh, Callie will take her first communion and then I'll explain the process and she in turn will feed everybody else. So Callie Barr, welcome to your first communion and take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Go ahead and eat it. And those are pretty big cases of bread. This is bread that the young people made uh, last uh, Wednesday night. So they made this bread, and it's more than that way for you. have to take a few chews to get it down. <laughs> and then take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. <laughs> she doesn't like the taste of it. That's a good sign. Okay. You can, Mom, you can put the glass back on the table. Okay, Callie, I'm going to have you take the bread and you can just serve your family. And I'll just say the words once. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you and you folks can take them and eat them as you get them. That's fine. And you can put the plate back and then you can grab, I don't know if there's enough in that top tray or not. Take that top tray and there's wine and grape juice and you go around and serve your family. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And you can just put it back on top of where you got it. Go ahead. We'll figure it out. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, Callie. You, family, and friends can return to your seats. And Con, if you can help me put another wine tray up there. 
Oh, we didn't we didn't figure a way for you to get rid of your empty cups, did we? Thank you, Connie. We're ready for our next communicant, Dylan Marquardt. Dylan, come forward. If family and friends would like to join you for your first communion. Oh, good idea, Connie. And you can just give the wine glass to whomever is going to serve you the wine. Okay, Mom, you can serve Dylan the bread. Dylan, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. You gotta eat the whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait. Does anybody know what kind of bread this is that we use, that we bake? Anybody? Unleavened. Unleavened bread, very good. Okay, Dad. This is the blood of Christ, Dylan, shed for you. Take and drink. <laughs> oh, he likes it. <laughs> you can put the glass down, and then you can take the bread, Dylan. And I will say, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you, and you can serve your family, and they can take and eat. eat. You can put that bread back and then take that top tray. And you'll just go around and serve your family the wine. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Then I'll just have Dylan come back around and he'll pick up. You can just put your empty cups back in the tray. Dylan, I'll just have you start over again and get everybody's empty cups. Thank you. And then Dylan, you can just put that tray back on top. That's fine. And the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, Dylan. Family and friends, you can return to your seats. And now I invite our third communi communicant, Ty Teske, and family and friends that would like to join Ty. And so I'm going to have you take the plate of bread there and give that to whomever is going to be serving you the bread, whoever that might be, and then take your wine glass right up there and give it to whomever is going to be serving you the wine. And I'll say the words and then you can take and eat. Ty, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Another big piece of bread. <laughs> Getting an extra helping of Jesus this morning. <laughs> and Ty, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. All right, Ty, you can put your wine glass back. He seems ambivalent, so we don't know yet on him. You can take the bread, 
And I'll say the words, Ty, and you just go around and serve your family. So this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. You just put the plate back and take that top tray and you can go around and serve your family. This is the blood of Christ. Given and shed for you. Take and drink. Ty, I'll just have you come back to mom and pick up the empty cups. And you can just place that back on top. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, Ty. You and your family may return to your seats. Now for everybody else, I'll have you take your individual meal and get it ready. You can peel off the cellophane on the top to expose the wafer, get that ready. Peel back the uh, foil and have the grape juice exposed. And uh, You'll be ready to eat. Wait till everybody looks ready. So everybody else, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And again, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God who nourishes us in this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been strengthened by your presence among us. Encourage us to go forth sustained by this giving of grace so that we may share your love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Well, again, thank you very much, all of you, for being here this morning, and especially the families of Callie and Dylan and Ty appreciate your presence here this morning as well. So young people, at the conclusion of the worship service, we'll take your glasses inside. Will somebody help me out with this and wash the glasses? And then you can have your glass back. And then there's a, uh, with your glass, we'll put your, conf or your first communion certificate. So you'll have that as well. So things going on this week, actually I've got a baptism this afternoon. This will be the second in a couple of weeks. And we've, we've got, the carport is our baptismal area now. So we do our baptisms in the carport. That seems to be working. This will be for Edward Leroy Levake, the child of Veronica Levake. Uh, doing that this afternoon. Uh, Wednesday virtual Bible study, tune in. Again, it's on Facebook. It's on our website, and it's on our YouTube page, so you can find it at any of those places. Then again, worship next Sunday at 9 o'clock, same time. Maybe not the same place. We might be down there. It just depends on my whim. And this is all weather dependent. Someone said I should probably take another vacation so it'll rain. Um, <laughs> had a pretty good run of luck, but as soon as I say that, there'll be a big giant storm next Sunday. But if that is the case, I usually make the call about seven-ish or so, and I'll post it on the website and on Facebook, 
and on the magic electronic talking machine. So uh, you'll be able to get notification if in fact the worship service will be canceled because of weather. And if that is the case, then I'll give you a very brief service virtually that will be posted as well. That's it, I think. I feel like I've missed something. Has anybody got any questions about anything? Any comments? Anybody want to know about God or Jesus or anything? Got all that up figured out? Okay. Well, as we head out into this week, and again, another week with a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the world. A lot of stuff going on. And I'm sure a lot of stuff going on in your lives. So just know somehow, some way that you're not alone. Know that somehow, some way, the Lord God in Jesus Christ is with you, giving you strength and giving you hope to, keep, to, uh, to carry on. So please know that as we go out into this week, and I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is Amazing Grace. It's five verses. We'll sing three verses. One, three, and five. One, three, and five of Amazing Grace. Now let us go in peace and shine in the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.